Hey guys, it's Jonathan Bocher from PlayGuitar.com. Welcome to the second part of our little Following the Chord series. Just a reminder, we're using this jam track, which you can get at PlayGuitar.com if you're not there already. Uh, PlayGuitar.com slash FTC. And uh, it's just a very simple, simple track. Uh, B minor for one bar, G major for one bar, D major for one bar, and A major for one bar with that little embellishment there. So in the first part, we went through our B minor riff and our G riff, which was very simple. Now in bar three, we're gonna move on to D major. So have a look at your root six bar chord right here, your D major bar chord, right? Um, remember, we're kind of tar trying to target these notes in some fashion, right? So what we're gonna do is just do a kind of a rake pick. And that's just where we, we do a, a single downstroke quickly, right? So they're not really individual notes. We're not really playing it like that. We're just raking through all these. One fell swoop. Now the trick to this is to kind of uh, roll your hand a little bit so that as you pick a, no a string, I'm really overemphasizing here. You're trying to release the pressure on the string just enough that the string isn't fretted anymore, which has the effect of muting the note, right? And at the same time, you can be muting um, with your the, the palm of your right hand, you can be adding some extra muting over here. So it doesn't matter if you can't, you know, nail that, that's fine. You can just, Think about how you can use these notes, right? Just kind of strum it. And that is the top end of our D major chord, right? And you know, that comes straight out of our out of D pentatonic major scale. There's note one, note two, note three, and the fourth note of our little of our uh, riff there, right? So we're starting off with that. And then we're coming up here to the 14th fret. Now, I'll just point out, this is the highest note in our riff, okay? It happens to be an F sharp. And F sharp happens to be part of the D major chord. There's your D major chord, D over F sharp. Very common because the D or the F sharp is already found right there in the D major chord. Okay, so that is related to the D chord. And remember, I said that oftentimes the highest note in the chord is an important one for establishing, um, you know, where that riff, sorry, the highest note in your riff is important for establishing relationship with the progression. So we get up here. And then we just do this kind of thing. Now this is kind of in between the scale patterns that I showed you. Over here, this portion here from the 14th fret up, now we're dealing with that same pattern that we used down here. So just think of that, right? That's what we're playing. It's just that we're positioned in between. Okay. Now I'll also point out that that note there, which is the last note, which is last notes are often also important. That's a D, right? So we end off on a D as well, which helps to resolve the riff in relation to the chord progression. Now, let's look at bar number four, which is over the A chord. Okay? So we've got our A chord right here. If we play it open at the 14th fret. So think about that as kind of your 
framework for, for what we're building off of, but also think about the fact that we're in this scale pattern, root five pentatonic minor. Okay. So we've got this shape and we've got our pentatonic minor shape here, right? What we're going to do is we're going to take these notes here, which is a fourth. Now the rhythm of that is very much the same as we played down here. Okay. That's a fourth. It's related. You know, you've got an A here and a D. So that's great. That's a fourth coming off of the A, which is going to sound great. Um, D would be the note that you would add to an A triad or replace the third with in an A triad to create a A sus4 chord, right? So kind of introducing, sus chords often introduce some sort of tension, right? And you do notice some tension in that, right? Especially when we add in that note there on the 16th fret. Okay, so we're going to go like this. We're going to uh, pick these two notes together and hammer on with our third finger, 16th fret, third string. Then we're going to come down here, 14th fret, and then 16th fret, fourth string. And then we're going to repeat that movement again with the third and fourth strings. So now this one, we're picking strings three and four, and again using our third finger to hammer on at the 16th fret fourth string, right? And we keep on stepping down through this scale. It's that same sort of pattern, right? So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna turn on the jam track and I'll play four bars, the four bar solo, and then I'll let it roll for four bars, and that's your chance to shine. You get to play the four bar solo, then I'll play it again, and then you can play it again. And that way, in kind of a copycat fashion, you can use your ear to help you, you know, listen very closely to start matching. Because sometimes, you know, we'll, we'll have kind of the right notes, but not the right timing or the right rhythm or things like that, or else we might have good rhythm, but not the right notes, right? And your ear, when you hear it back to back, um, then that can be a very powerful way to help train yourself and, uh, and to learn something quickly. So let's give it a shot. I'm gonna turn on this jam track. thing I wanted to note about this A riff. If you'll notice the notes that we're using those notes there they kind of come out of the B minor shape but also they were the notes that we were using in this little riff down here the little embellishment off of the A major that I showed you right and so that helps it tie it in very nicely with the A. It's not as directly related as some of the other riffs, but you can hear that it's, it's definitely working nicely together there, right? So hopefully that was helpful for you. Um, I know it was a kind of a really quick pass at, at this type of thing, rolling a lot of different things together in one short series. Uh, if we really get into the theory and the patterns and the shapes and the, you know, 
why the why of it all, like why these three notes, you know, that's hours and hours of kind of backstory that we haven't got into. So if, if you're just getting started soloing, this is probably at least a little bit over your head, if not a lot over your head. But uh, if you've got some experience and you know your patterns and you're looking for a new way to add some melody into your playing, then this could be uh, a really interesting direction for you to kind of explore. And if that's the case, I invite you to check out my Following the Chords course, which you can find at PlayGuitar.com. I think you'll find it's a, a fun little course where we, we learn uh, a little rhythm, a few solos, and we talk a lot about how they're relating to the chords. You can find that at PlayGuitar.com, and you have yourself a fantastic day.